Good morning, friends. I wasn't planning on filming today, which seems to be the motto of every video lately, but yesterday, Alex and I went for a walk and we found these beautiful flowers that smelled so good. And so this morning, I went back there and it's out in front of our house and I searched what kind of flower it is and it turns out it's an edible flower, so... Let's make more sugar syrup. The flower in question for today is honeysuckle. I think this is a Japanese variety, uh, but I will try to confirm that at some point. Here's what the blooms look like. They're these little delicate little flowers. The smell, however, is not delicate at all. It is so sweet and so floral, like the most intense flower smell, but you wanna eat it. It's like candy and it's not like roses. I wanna say, you know those tropical like Hawaiian flowers, the little ones that look like, I wanna say it's like a hibiscus of some sort. Anyway, it smells like what I think I remember that one smelling like. It's this very sweet, oh, so summery and springy. Apparently these guys only bloom from April to June. The entire plant is toxic except for the blooms. As the blooms age, they go from white to this beautiful yellow color. Isn't that neat? They just change color from white to yellow. Um, and they're full of nectar. The pollinators love them. I took probably 1 30th of the number of blooms that are outside. There's tons and tons left outside. They grow on a vine like this. You can see they just sort of pop out a bunch of flowers out of the vine. So if you want to come along with me while I make another sugar syrup or a floral honey, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to do an infused tea with these flowers and then I am going to uh, dissolve sugar in it until it becomes a nice thick sweet honey that I'm going to use as a sweetener for my coffee and my tea. That sounds cool. Keep watching. By the way, friends, hello. I am Laura, this is the Last Minute Laura Show. If you're new here, don't forget to click the like button on the video and subscribe for more videos like this. I do a lot of recipes, handmade, crochet, natural dye, sewing, all kinds of crafty stuff. Today, it's a recipe. So I'm still technically in my pajamas, do not judge me. But the first thing we're gonna do is get a pot on the stove and I'm going to add all of the flowers to the pot and then I'm going to fill the pot up with um, probably about a cup of water. Yeah, I think I'll do a cup of water. I'm just making sure that there's no green bits as I put the flowers in because like I said, all parts of the plant are poison. All parts of the plant are toxic except for the flowers, which are full of a very sweet nectar that we are going to get all the benefits from. Apparently hummingbirds love this flower as well. All right, so now that that is added to the pot, I'm going to turn the pot on to medium just to get it up to a nice warm hot temperature. Oops, wrong burner. I'm gonna turn the heat on to medium, get it nice and hot, but we're not gonna let it boil or simmer or anything. As soon as it approaches a simmer, I'm gonna turn the heat all the way down to low and we're gonna let it sit on low for I think one hour. So let's get that temperature up first. Okay, so I'm making an executive decision. The smell of the house right now is so tropical and so beautiful and the flowers are white. So that means the sugar syrup is going to be white or clear. Uh, so I'm going to actually get some of my dried calendula and I'm gonna add it to this little tea that I'm making in order to kind of hopefully impart some of the yellow orange from the calendula into the um, honeysuckle syrup. I think that's a good idea. The calendula won't impart too much fragrance or flavor, but it will hopefully give us a little bit of the color. So, or should we do a marigold? Probably one marigold would color that whole thing. Oh no, it's ready to turn the heat down. All right, so I'm turning the heat all the way down to low now. It started simmering while I was talking, so we're gonna turn that heat off. It actually has a bit of a greenish yellow color already. 
you can see the leaves or the petals, sorry, have started to become a little bit translucent and greenish. Beautiful. So I'm gonna just put the lid on there and put the timer on for one hour uh, with the heat on low. And I will decide if we're gonna do calendula or marigolds and I'll let you know. Even better, I found some sulfur cosmos in my apothecary. So I am going to grab a couple of my cosmos and I'm just going to put them in there and that should brighten the color up. I don't think we'll need too many, maybe just a couple more. Just to give the color a little bit more tropical vibes to go with how tropical this smell is. Like, whoa, it smells like a vacation. All right, now we're gonna leave it for an hour. See you in a bit. Okie dokie. The timer is off, so I am going to turn the heat off on the tea we've got here. And we're gonna just let it sit there off the heat for an hour. Okay, so the timer has just run out. Um, but I'm busy, so I'm just gonna leave this in here for a little while until I'm ready to strain it, and then we're gonna be doing some straining, so I'll be back. All right, so it's a couple, an hour later, a little over an hour later, um, and I am going to pour out the uh, tea into this cold brew strainer thing. And now my phone rings, of course. Okay, so now I'm going to just rinse out the pot. It's been a little while. All of the liquid, it seems, has dripped out of those flowers. You can see they are nice and squished down and dry. And here is the liquid. The Cosmos did impart a little bit of a yellow hue there, looking golden. Oh my God, smelling just <laughs> so good. Oh my God, I wish you could smell this. This smells, if you thought the roses probably smelled good, this is like next level. It smells like a tropical vacation. All right, I'm gonna rinse the pot, put it back on the stove and then add the liquid back to the pot. There we go. I'm gonna put the heat on to medium and I'm gonna measure out my liquid. Got one. Two. So that's one cup of liquid, which is perfect. We're gonna let that liquid come up just below boil, and then I am going to add um, two cups of sugar. I'm telling you, the smell in the kitchen right now is unreal. It smells so, so good. The water's pretty hot now, so I'm gonna start adding some sugar. I'm gonna add one cup. So remember, this is a half cup measuring spoon. So there's one and there's two. Now I'll let that dissolve in. And when that's dissolved, I'll add another cup. So all the sugar has now dissolved. What I am going to do next is I'm going to wait until that starts to hit a boil, which it's just about to do, you can see now. And I'm going to turn a timer on for one minute and I'm gonna let it boil for one minute without dealing with it while it boils. I'm going to wash uh, my jars and get them ready to uh, get some syrup in them. And as it boils, you can see it gets this frothiness. Oop, that's a little too hot. We don't want it quite that much of a boil. We want it to boil just enough 
so that we get this frothiness at the edges and we'll scoop off that frothiness. There we go, that's the right temperature. We don't want it boiling, oops, well, there's my timer. We don't want it boiling too far beyond this because we wanna be able to scoop off the frothy bits here. That's just any pollen or imperfections or dust or perhaps little bits of insects. If for some reason they made it through the first straining, uh, this is the point at which we get all of that out. Most likely it's just a little bit of pollen, maybe a little dust. All right, we've got the hot jars here ready to go and we've got our hot liquid here. I'll turn the heat off on that now because it doesn't need to stay hot and I'm just gonna scoop and fill up my jars. And I've got a damp paper towel here ready because I know I'll probably spill some on the rim and I'll use this to clean off the rim of the jar before I put the lid on. Well, that one's not gonna seal, that's too big. Actually, I have a small jar, let me just grab a different jar. All right, so these are super duper hot right now. We're gonna leave them there to cool down and possibly seal. This one will seal, this one probably won't. Actually, this one might. Will this one? We'll see. I'll let you know when I know. But look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? We'll leave this here to cool down and hopefully thicken up. And we'll come back tomorrow to give that a taste test. Oh my god, it smells so good. Okay, we'll taste test it once it's thickened up tomorrow. See you then. Okay friends, it's a couple days later now and it is time for us to do the final taste test of the honeysuckle syrup. So this is how it's growing. This is the way that the vine sort of grows. It has these branches that branch out and are covered in how many? Little groupings of two flowers and oh, they smell so good and so sweet. Anyway, so this is how it grows on a vine. I've picked a couple today just so I could show you them with some of our flowers that we have in the garden right now. And now let's do a taste test. So it did get sealed, which is awesome. Ooh, which means we're gonna need to crack it open here. There we go. Oh, it's a beautiful golden color. Like, wow, what a beautiful color. It's like gold honey. It's perfect. Okay, and it smells just like the flower, honestly. Maybe the flower has a little bit more of like a vanilla. I feel like the sugar syrup has more of like a sweet, like fruit direction, whereas the flower kind of feels more like buttery, more vanilla-y. But let's see what it tastes like. Oh my God, it's gonna be so good. It tastes just like the flower. Mmm, I'm happy about that. Mmm, I didn't even know this was an edible flower. It was just so amazing out in front of our house. It smelled so good that I picked it and I had to identify it. Mmm, what a lovely syrup. It's definitely floral. It's got like sweet tropical vibes. It's very like, oh, it's light. It's beautiful. Very different from some of the others we've tried. Like this is a completely different flavor to the chamomile syrup and it's a completely different flavor to like lilac syrup even. So anyway, I recommend it if you've got um, a, what is it called, a honeysuckle. If you've got a honeysuckle vine growing in your area, make sure it's the kind that's edible in case there's any other kinds that I don't know about. But I would recommend giving it a try and let's see what the next edible flower that we find this summer is for the next um, 
floral syrup. I'm really enjoying this. I'm making two, two cans each time, two jars, and I'm putting one in the pantry and one we're kind of using up during the summer. Um, and I think that's gonna be so fun for during the winter months to have like floral syrups in our tea. I think it's gonna be a nice way to mark, uh, mark the winter. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every week and I live stream a couple times a week as well. So check that out. And uh, if you are a patron, here is the list of my patrons. Thank you, patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you'd like to become a patron, you will get access to the recipe for this. Um, and a coloring page for it as well. Links for that are in the description down below. But thank you so much for being here. I had an awesome time. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week. Bye.